Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Forex Mentor with Boyan. I'm the Boyan in question and I'm here to answer any questions you might have on the Orthodox theology and practice from my own personal knowledge and experience. Uh, and greetings from the wonderful Italian town of Trieste. Uh, I'm here with my family, I'm staying in my godmother's apartment uh, for a bit of a vacation, but there's no rest for the wicked, so you get this video. And uh, today's question is actually really an interesting one, and this kitchen is very echoey, there's nothing I can do about it. So the question is, uh, why do we ask others to pray for us? If two people pray for me, is it somehow more powerful than when I pray for myself? If so, why? Are there three people's prayers more powerful than two, uh, or those of a saint? It feels like we're trying to convince God by numbers, and that seems absurd. Imagine God saying, well, I wasn't going to answer your prayer at first, but since you and Boyan both asked, I'll consider it. He says nice things about me on social media, and one of his jokes last year was somewhat clever. Actually, never mind, I'm thinking of Miloš. Can you get him to pray for you instead? Any guidance on this topic would be much appreciated. The question is from Matthew Bibenton. Well, thank you for your question, Matthew. And I agree with you. Uh, the way you phrase this question does make it absurd that God simply goes by numbers, because uh, God does not give spirit by measure, as, uh, as it says in the epistles. But you have unleashed a couple of very interesting points that we need to dissect. First of all, I want to share some of my, you know, uh, contemplations recently, and that especially when it comes to prayer, all of us, Christians, atheists, what have you, are so focused on how much it works. What will make my prayer work? I left uh, Christianity because God said he will answer all of prayers and he did not answer all of my prayers. Well, they conducted an experiment on prayer and it did not work, 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 work. This is, I believe, the more I think about it, the more it shows our horrible failure at prayer life. Results should be the last thing when it comes to prayer. Prayer isn't magic. Uh, we are not, you know, sort of assured that it will work. You do this, you make the sign of the cross properly, you fast properly, you fold your hands like this or pray like this and it will work. You did this, oh no, you were supposed to... No, that's not how it works. Why? Because prayer primarily is essentially our relationship with the Lord. And there are so many aspects to it, because if we say that somebody prays a lot, is his relationship with the Lord better than the one who doesn't pray as much? We're inclined to say yes, but it actually does not at all have to be the case. Again, as St. Paul says, I'd rather say five words with my mind than a thousand with my tongue, you know? Uh, and uh, when we discuss why prayer is more powerful when a lot of us pray, I think we again fall into that trap of measuring the efficaciousness of prayer, whereas it's not really the prayer's uh, initial job to do that, you know. Uh, the point of prayer is simply for us to commune with Christ, with God, you know, and his saints, even though that's secondary and uh, tangential about, uh, on uh, our own communion with Christ. So, uh, when it comes to what makes the prayer work and tick, there are so many uh, facets to it, uh, facets to it, and none of them is, the, the only one that ultimately matters is faith. Uh, well, two, uh, faith and whether God wills it, and that's about it. Anything else might aid prayer, can help prayer, but, uh, you know, it doesn't really uh, have to be the reason why prayer worked or didn't work. So, the things that can influence the prayer are faith, fasting, did you deny yourself anything or a lot of things in order to get what you want, consistency, did you pray for it long enough, uh, did many people pray? Did you pray alone? Um, you know, all of these things influence, however, we can never ultimately say what can help and what can help. We might have a lot of really devout people, really prayer, pray, you know, praying, fasting, and achieving nothing, and then we can have somebody who offhandedly 
says a quick prayer, God help Bob and God helps Bob because somebody prayed. Um, now let me return to your original question. Why do we pray for others? The primary reason why we pray to others is because we want to offer ourselves and others up to God. That's it. That's the most important thing. Uh, we pray for others because it is a loving thing to do. We want others to be in God, you know? That does not mean that they're necessarily healthy. That does not mean that they're necessarily happy on occasion. That does not mean that they're doing well by our secular standards, but still that they're within God. As we say in the liturgy, having remembered our most holy, most pure uh, Queen and ever Virgin Mary with all, uh, with all of the saints, let us commit uh, ourselves and one another to Christ our God. That is why we pray for uh, one another, because we want everybody else to be in God. So why do we pray together? Again, as it says in the Gospels, whenever two or three are gathered uh, in my name, I abide with them. That does not necessarily mean that, uh, that uh, you know, it's more powerful, even though, I mean, it sort of does, but it, again, it's not the primary reason. Uh, but we have to remember that uh, Christianity is primarily a religion of community. And you can never have uh, indivi uh, individualistic Christianity. Even hermits who lived, uh, you know, away could not escape this because uh, they would still have to receive the holy mysteries, the sacraments, or they would have, on, uh, even, uh, you know, even if they were totally alone, they were sort of forced to receive the holy mysteries from angels. So still, again, they're not alone and they cannot be alone. Us praying for one another shows our common brotherhood, sisterhood, fatherhood, motherhood, you know, and that we are, that we are all connected to that common baptism by the Spirit and uh, by blood, uh, Christ's body and blood going uh, through our veins and living in our flesh. Uh, that is, again, why we pray for one another. And this is the same answer uh, why us Orthodox pray for the dead. Again, we want them to be in the Lord. That, uh, of course, that does also mean that their sins are getting forgiven, but that is natural byproduct of being in the Lord, you know? Uh, and that's it. There is nothing more. Uh, God rejoices at us coming together, at being unified. And anything that's, that does not promote unity uh, is a sin against him. Of course, I'm thinking about unity in Christ. I don't mean any sort of unity as in, let's join all religions in one common religion. No, no, no. <laughs> we are not falling for that one. That does not mean uh, that uh, we will be stupid when it comes to unity. But when we have unity in Christ, when we all come together, when we pray, then again, we ascend everyone and everything, as we say in the liturgy, all men and women, uh, to Christ our God. How and what God does with that offering up, it's completely up to him. And in general, it's completely mysterious. We have no, no way of knowing. And sometimes, sometimes the Lord does reveal to us why some things did not go as we really thought should go a certain way or not. Uh, I hope I answered your question somewhat again. Prayer is a great mystery and anything that um, you can never say very definite things about a pra prayer again, because prayer is a relationship and uh, relationships are never static. They're always dynamic. Again, I can say 200 decades for somebody's help and it doesn't achieve anything. Uh, or I can say an offhanded prayer and miraculously heals, heal, heal someone. But prayer always does achieve something, again, bringing people into the Lord. That's it. Uh, I hope I answered your question and uh, see you guys in the next video. Bye.